Thank you, Lord. Well, let's lift our hands to the Most High God and bless His holy name. Give Him glory, give Him honor, give Him adoration. Bless the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Ancient of days. Praise Him. Praise Him. He's worthy to be praised. Give him glory, give him honor. Give him adoration. Tell him you love him. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name we worship. The great I am. Alleluia. Alleluia. You are the mighty God. Kashanda. You are the mighty God. You are the mighty God. King of kings and lord of lords, the ancient of days, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the I am that I am, the Rock of Ages, the unchangeable changer, the King of glory, the Lord of hosts. Glory be to your holy name. Accept our worship in Jesus' name. Thank you for what you did yesterday. Thank you for what you are going to do today. Thank you in advance for what you will do tomorrow. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. My Father, my God, everything that is not of God in our lives collide with them today. Give each and every one of us a divine encounter. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. Uh, shake hands with one or two people and say, God, we surprise you today. And then you may please be seated. Once again, I bring greetings to those of you who are watching us at the various viewing centers all over the world. The Almighty God that you have come to meet will not disappoint you. As for those of you who are passing by, you are hearing us. I welcome you to join with us because something special is about to happen tonight. The Lord told us at the beginning of the year that the wind is blowing. And then 
those of us who are with us during the Holy Ghost service last Friday, we learned about what happens when the fire falls. Tomorrow, by the grace of God, the last day of this special Divine Encounter series, we are going to discover what happens when the wind is blowing and the fire is falling at the same time. So tomorrow is going to be an extraordinary day in the mighty name of Jesus. And we encourage you when you are coming tomorrow to bring an handkerchief and a bottle of oil. We will be anointing them specially for your use for the rest of the year. I want you to prophesy to the fellow next to you, whether the devil likes it or not, I'm going to be here tomorrow. Exodus chapter 8, from verse 16 to 19. Exodus 8, from verse 16 to 19. And the Lord said unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out thy rod and smite the dust of the land that it may become lies throughout all the land of Egypt. And they did so, for Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and smote the dust of the earth, and he became lies in man and in beast. All the dust of the land became lies throughout all the land of Egypt. And the magician did so with the enchantments to bring forth lies, but they could not. So there were lies upon man and upon beast. Then the magician said unto Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. I told you yesterday that the true meaning of encounter is head on collision between two forces. And I gave you the illustration of a car having a head on collision with a trailer. I'm sure we all know that the result of such a collision is going to depend on the size of the trailer. Because at the end of the collision, the trailer will remain, but there will be very little left of the car. In the text that we've just read to you, we find a divine encounter be between God and all the forces of darkness in Egypt. At the end of the day, we saw how mighty our God is. So mighty, so powerful, that just one finger of his hand subdued all the enemies. And I'm here today to announce to you that just one finger of the Most High God will touch all those forces that have been working against you and subdue them all. All the forces of darkness in Egypt tried all their powers against just one finger of the Almighty God 
And they said, we surrender. Because you came tonight, all forces, whether from your father's house, or your mother's house, or your husband's house, or in your place of work, that have been working against your success, we surrender to God. Now when you read John chapter 10 verse 10 John chapter 10 verse 10 The Bible tells us that the devil, the thief Comes to do three principal things To steal, to kill, and to destroy And then Jesus Christ said I have also come to do three principal things that you might have life, have abundant life, and have more abundant life. In other words, he is saying when there's a collision between me and the devil he comes to steal from you I have come to restore to you <laughs> and I prophesy to someone here tonight everything the devil has stolen from you will be restored today your health your joy, your promotion, your progress that the enemy has stolen, they will be restored tonight. The devil comes to steal and to kill. Jesus Christ said, I've come to restore and to bring back to life. He said in John chapter 11, verse 25, John 11, 25, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. So the devil comes to kill, but the Lord has come to bring back to life. When there is a divine encounter, when there is a collision between the devil, and the Lord Jesus Christ, everything that had died jumps back to life. And so I'm decreeing again in the name that's above every other name, every good thing that the enemy had killed in your life will come back to life. I have pointed out to some of us in the past in all the cases where Jesus Christ raised the dead he never opened his mouth to say death release your victim because he considered death so inferior he never mentioned the name death when they told him that the daughter of Jairus was dead. He said, no, she's sleeping. She called death sleep. Because when you are sleeping, you can be woken up. I have good news for somebody here today. Whatever is considered dead, your womb, your brain, your future, shall come back to life in Jesus' name. Satan comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. To destroy means to reduce to nothing. To deal with in such a manner that there can never be hope again. But Jesus Christ says, I've come.
to reverse the irreversible. That even when they said to him that Lazarus has been dead and buried four days, that even relatives said there is no more hope. Jesus Christ said, move the stone out of the way and see me at work. In the name that's above every other name, everything that has been considered forever gone in your life, every good thing that they say can never resurrect, shall come back this very week in Jesus' name. And so we see here that the devil does his work in parts. He starts by stealing, then he moves on to killing, and then he moves on to destroying. He does all these things a little step at a time. For example, in the story of the woman with the issue of blood in Mark chapter 5, from verse 25 to 34, Mark 5, 25 to 34, the problem started with just blood flowing. A drop at a time. A drop at a time. And the woman, when he expected the dropping to stop, and nothing happened, went to the first doctor. The first doctor charged her. And instead of getting better, nothing happened. So she moved to the next doctor, and then to the next doctor, and then to the next doctor. And in the process, she became weaker, she became poorer, steadily, until she had nothing left at all. And by now she was much worse than at the beginning of the problem. Step by step by step. But the day Jesus Christ collided, the day that woman had a divine encounter, everything that the enemy had done over the years, over 12 years, were reversed in one single day. I prophesy to somebody listening to me today. It doesn't matter how long you have suffered. Your suffering will end tonight. When you read Mark chapter 3, from verse 1 to 5, Mark chapter 3 from verse 1 to 5, the Bible tells us of a man with a withered hand. What does that mean? Once upon a time, the man had two strong hands. Then little by little, the hand became weaker and weaker and thinner until the hand can no longer do anything. They call it withered. Some of you will understand what that means. Once upon a time, you were strong. You were healthy. Then little by little, you grew weaker and sicker. Some of you will understand. There was a time when you were very good at school. Then suddenly you got to a class. And instead of passing, you failed. You tried again and you failed. Some of you, your store used to be full of goods. But little by little, it became more and more empty. And some of you will understand. You were rich once. That's why you could go to the bank and borrow big money for big business. And then something went wrong. And then, instead of you being able to pay back the bank, 
the loan began to increase steadily until you don't even have any money to feed yourself. But when the Lord moved in, it took the devil years to wither the hand. In a single day, the withered hand became whole again. I don't know how God is going to do yours, but everything that had withered in your life will come back to wholeness today. Poverty comes in stages. When you read 2 Kings chapter 4, from verse 1 to 7, 2 Kings 4, from verse 1 to 7, it tells you the story of a widow. People don't give you a loan if they look at you and they feel you can't pay back. But this widow, had a lot of debt because things got worse and worse and worse to the extent that the creditor said now we're going to sell your children there's nothing left in the house to sell and this woman cried to a man of God had an encounter with the one who says silver is mine gold is mine she had an encounter with the one who said the earth is mine and the fullness thereof she had an encounter for to, with the one who said my god will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory see one single encounter her debt was paid she never had to borrow again i pray for somebody here today particularly who might be having one kind of financial problem or the other, before the end of this month, you will sing a new song. Oh, you said, how can that be? Well, I remember very well the story of one of my sons. One of my Handlifters, if we we'll use that title, came to one of the meetings and the Lord God spoke as He's speaking right now. That there was someone present that within a very short period of time, God was going to pay off the debt of that fellow. It wasn't long after that that the bank chairman called him. Sir, how are you going to pay your debt? The young man said, well, you know very well. <laughs> Even if I'm paying you a million naira a day, for all the days I've been on, on earth, and it was about 50 years old, you know, I can't finish paying this thing. And suddenly the manager or chairman or whatever turned to him and said, Debt cancelled. You see, when I talk to you about having an encounter with God, I'm talking about having an encounter with someone who does his own things mysteriously. The God who does things miraculously. The God who controls the heavens, who controls the earth, who controls kings, who can control the bank manager, who can control those who say you are not going to rise up. When you have an encounter with him, something mighty will happen in your life tonight. Many a times, sorrow comes in stages. Because that's the way of the devil. And when you read the story of Luke chapter 7, from verse 11 to 15, Luke 7, 11 to 15, it tells you the story of a widow, the widow, what we call the widow of Nain, who had one son, and she was going to bury the son. I gave you that illustration yesterday. 
she was going to the burial ground. A crowd was with her. And the Lord Jesus Christ was coming from the other direction. A crowd was with him. And there was a collision. This widow used to know joy. She knew joy the day she got married. That was a day of joy for her. But then the husband died. And sorrow began. But they consoled her. Don't weep. Look at the son. She's, he's like his father. Take care of that. So whenever she wanted to feel lonely, she would call the boy. Hey, come. But then all of a sudden, the boy fell sick. And she thought what was going on. Before she knew it, the child died. And she thought that for the rest of her life, she was going to live in sorrow. But then she had an encounter with the resurrection and the life. She had an encounter with the one who will say, let there be light and there will be light. She had an encounter to the one who will say, the dead, come back to life. She had an encounter to the one who can say to the devil, get out of my way. I decree in that name that's above every other name, every trace of sorrow in your life will end today. People don't become hopeless overnight. They become hopeless little by little. Got a letter from someone who began to list all that had happened. He said, Daddy, I'm thinking of committing suicide. I said, ah, just when your problem is about to be solved, just a, a single encounter will change hopelessness to hope. Because in the case of the woman with the issue of blood, each time she went to a new doctor, she had new hope. And then the new doctor will fail, and the hope will diminish. And then another doctor. But in the case of the Lord Jesus Christ, the day this woman had a, an encounter with the Almighty God, it wasn't a case of hope rising. It was a case of hope has come. And I'm telling somebody here today, because as, just as you are listening to me, the power that is in the word of God is going to change the title. Right now, they call you the hopeless case. That's the title. But before tomorrow morning, in the name that's above every other name, before tomorrow morning, in the name of the one who is called the hope of glory, in the name of the one who is called the king of glory, your title will be the hopeful one. A single encounter. Just as the wind blows. And it blows away all problems. Blows away all sickness. Blows away all disease. Blows away all poverty. Blows away all sorrow. And a new day begins for you. Yeah. You see, how can this thing be? We're not talking of man. We're talking of the Almighty. We're talking about the one whose finger can silence the enemy. If all he does tonight is to touch you with his finger, that will solve all the problems. And it always happens. 
in a way that you yourself won't even f you, you would think you are dreaming i tell you one story and then it'll be time for us to pray it happened at uh, the national stadium years ago we were having a holy ghost service there the place was jammed with people people were sitting at the at the very top of the gallery or whatever you can call it and there was a man there right on sitting there on top and she had a big goiter big growth on his neck and there was this lady sitting next to him and you know very well when you have a reproach when you have something that is not allowing your joy to be full that's what people will see first even before you they see you do you know that up to now people see called batmels blind batmels long after god opened his eyes and i have good news for somebody tonight whatever is the reproach in your life is going to fly away And so the sister was with one eye looking at the growth. She came for Holy Ghost service just like the other man. But <laughs> it was the growth that was the attraction. And all of a sudden, God spoke and said, There was someone here with a growth on your neck that the growth is gone. And the sister turned because she knew who that word was for turn to see and she discovered like a bird the growth has disappeared ah in the name that is above every other name every reproach in your life we fly away tonight I'm sure some of you have heard the rest of the story. When the program was over, the sister was so dazed. She's not the one who got the miracle. It was the man next to, to her. She was so dazed that she trekked from Surulere, those of you who know Lagos, from Surulere to Palm Grove before she realized, ah, my car was parked at the stadium. The miracle was so big, she forgot herself. Tonight, there's a miracle coming the way of somebody. Oh, glory be to God. When you share your testimony, people around will be afraid. Now let me close with this. Everything is made in parts. You have the parts of a car. You have the parts of your body, hand, legs, head, eyes, and so on and so forth. Now there is somebody who made you is the one who made you in parts who joined the parts together joined the hands to the body the legs the eyes and so on now he has the power to take you to pieces you know when the engine of a car has knocked they bring down the engine they take it to pieces, they repair it, and bring it together. There is a God who can take you to pieces, clean you up, assemble you, and do it all in one day. In the book of Isaiah chapter 6, you can read it from verse 1 to 8. Isaiah 6 from verse 1 to 8. Isaiah had an encounter with God 
one encounter he saw God in his glory and he cried out and said ha ah, woe is me I have been taken to pieces and the almighty God said alright I know what I'm doing I'm taking you to pieces so I can clean you up and then join you together and then you can begin to fulfill your destiny tonight God is about to pick somebody and break them to pieces check what is wrong with the hand and remove it check what is wrong with the leg and remove it check what is wrong with the brain and remove it check what is wrong with the heart and remove it and then put everything together again and then say hey my boy hey my girl the day has come for you to begin to fulfill destiny If you are the one, let me hear you shout hallelujah. Because when there is a head-on collision between a car and a trailer, <laughs> the car will be taken to pieces. The windshield will shatter. The window will crumble etc etc et but that's the devil's way in the case of the almighty god all the parts will be taken one by one and they will be checked cleaned up and assembled when you have an encounter with god today he will take your body to pieces clean everything and reassemble he will take your finances take it to pieces remove what is wrong and bring everything together he will take your family bring it to pieces clean it up and bring it together he will take your career bring it to pieces clean it up and bring everything together if you are the one let me hear you say amen your day of joy has come oh I say it again your day of joy has come an end has come to your sorrow Believe me honestly, before tomorrow morning, you will testify. There is only one thing you must do. In the story of the woman with the issue of blood that I mentioned earlier, after she had that divine encounter, after she touched the hem of his garment and something like an electric volt went through her body and put everything right the bible says she came forward knelt before the lord jesus christ and jesus christ said now your faith has made the whole whole means no more sickness no more poverty no more sorrow no more shame no more hopelessness so if you are here or wherever you are listening to me and you want the old almighty God who can make you whole to step into your situation 
you must come before him fall at his feet and say oh lord i surrender my life to you i surrender completely make me whole if you know you are still living in sin even if you are going to church but you know you are pretending but you want wholeness you want to be made whole body soul and spirit come run to the altar wherever you are and let's cry to god together for your salvation god bless you i'm going to count from one to seven if you want to surrender your life to jesus come now come now the lord is calling you this can be the day you have been waiting for come quickly i'm counting one Two. Three. Everything can change in a day when you have an encounter with God. Hurry up. Four. It doesn't matter how long the devil has been tormenting you. Just one divine encounter and everything will change. Her come, come and surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Everything will become new. Five. Oh yes, today is your day. Your sorrow it's over now hurry up come and surrender your life to jesus christ six thank you father glory be to your holy name keep coming keep coming keep coming i wait 10 seconds for you Ten seconds more. Thank you, Lord. Yes, keep coming. Six. Thank you, Father. Okay, keep coming. Don't stop. Just make sure you get there before we finish praying because I'm about to pray now. Amen. Now, those of you who are already in front and those of you who are on the way all over the place in the whole world, cry to the Almighty God. Tell Him, please, I've come to you. Have mercy on me save my soul let me have the encounter of salvation tonight forgive all my sins and i will serve you for the rest of my life go ahead talk to him and the rest of us let's stretch our hands towards these our new brothers and sisters and intercede for them pray that the one who saved your soul will save their own souls also go ahead cry to god for them cry to god for them Thank you, Father. Thank you, Almighty God. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. My Father, my God, I want to thank you very, very much for these wonderful people that have come forward to surrender their life to you. I can't see them all, but you can see all over the world. As they have come to you, Father, please receive them. Have mercy on them. Let your blood wash away their sins. Save their souls, Lord. Receive them into the family of God. And from now on, any time they call on you, answer them by fire. 
And I pray, Lord God Almighty, they will never backslide. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. For two minutes, two minutes, that particular thing in your life that you want the Almighty God to remove completely, talk to God about it and say, God, with your mighty finger, touch this problem in my life so that it will just disappear lord this reproach in my life with your mighty finger remove it right now go ahead talk to the lord In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. My Father, my God, I want to bless your holy name for tonight. Thank you for what you have already done. Daddy, tonight, with your mighty finger, every problem in the life of this, your children, remove. Every sickness, no matter how long, wherever they may be hiding in the body of your children, with your mighty hand, remove. Everything that is causing your children sorrow, my Father, my God, in the mighty name of Jesus, with your mighty hand, uproot. Everything that you need to put right so that the joy of this your children may be full with your mighty finger deal with it in Jesus name everything that the devil has destroyed my father my God tonight in your own miraculous way restore I'm asking that you will prove to this your children that you are the Almighty. I have told them that there's nothing too big for you to do. Tonight, in your own miraculous way, prove your almightiness. By the time we return tomorrow, Father, let every one of us be dancing for joy. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let someone shout a big hallelujah. I will see you tomorrow in Jesus' name.